Yo. So, uh, I don't know. I kind of don't want to do this video, but I want to do this video because, I mean, I feel like it's probably good to have this conversation with society, you know, because that's, that's my job is telling society what to do. Mr. Insane as fuck over here. <laughs> um, insane doesn't mean you're wrong, though. You know, just so you know. I don't know, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm into debating. Into, de into debating. Um, I debate with, uh, a lot of people on a lot of platforms. Um, usually, like, text-based which I'm better at. Um, if you give me a minute to think, I'm gonna, you know, pick the best possible outcome of what to say and not just the first thing that comes to mind. But, you know, sometimes the first thing that comes to mind isn't bad either. Um, anyway. Uh, systemic racism came up. And oh yeah, by the way, to preference this video, I don't want this to come across like I'm virtue signaling or any shit like that. Um, you know, any, any topic is a topic worth discussing, I guess. Um, this is gonna take a lot of weed to get through. But, uh, systemic racism came up and someone was trying to make a bunch of points that you know I rebuttaled and then they just sent me this video which um yeah this is just essentially what every person who doesn't believe in systemic uh, racism regurgitates and it's nonsense so I'm just gonna address you know the head of the snake uh, and we'll talk about all of it. Um, if you know who Mr. Ben Shapiro is, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna know why I, I'm also not ex excited to do this. Uh, other than that, I'm sorry to introduce the rest of you to, you know, the not racist side of the world. Your podcast every day. Well, thank you for coming uh, and thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Thank it you. Thank guts. you. Uh, so my question uh, is about race and culture. Uh, so while I agree with you that when you look at white America, it's silly to say that the majority of white Americans are actively trying to prevent you from getting to where you want to be. Uh, I'm East Indian, and I have definitely experienced some racism, but I never felt as though it keeps Indians from succeeding. So I do think there's a cultural component that supersedes the color of your skin. But I also think that it's naive to say that it just so happens that the same minority groups that have been historically oppressed happen to have cultures that are less conducive to success. Uh, I believe that environment can create culture. Uh, can you acknowledge the historical reasonings that led that these so-called unsuccessful cultures uh, and not put blame on these minority groups? Uh, I know that in your heart, I don't think you're a racist person, uh, but in my, in my opinion, uh, to blame people for their, failure, for their cultural failures without taking into consideration historical, uh, the history in general, conceals a lack of empathy and sort of hints at racism. Okay. Um, I will say, uh, one, these are kids that are not, you know, really debaters, I guess. <clears throat> like, you can kind of tell that they're trying to do too much with one question. But, uh, any kind of preset some questionable premises that... I'm sure Ben Shapiro here is going to exploit, um, with that kind of question, from what I understand of the question he was asking, uh, can you not acknowledge historical context to, uh, you know, 
today's society and systemic racism and the effects of history on today. Um, that's not the most solid way to form the question, but it's like a shorter version. He could have tried to shorten it a bit. Um, yeah, we'll get into what Mr. Mr. Benethy, that's what Ben is short for, by the way, Benethy. So uh, I'll fight back on the last point that, that, you know, there's anything to do with empathy or racism here. Um, but I fully agree with you. Like 100, not, not like 90%, like 100%. I think the bad cultures are gen- Uh, ooh, okay. Sounded like he was about to go down a good road where I was about to be like, oh, maybe he, he isn't, you know, but then he- he said bad cultures. I want to say real quick, I know this is slightly contradictory to the point I'm about to make too. Um, I know it's hard to think this way, but like, I don't, I don't think there's necessarily, uh, maybe there are a couple just purely racist people but I think most people aren't just racist they just have a lot of ideas that are if that makes sense and <clears throat> it's really hard to find the line of just like are you a racist are you a racist or are you a person who has racist ideas um and there is a difference like, there are some people who are just, like, their whole existence is hating other people. And that's weird. Like, those people are just weird to everyone. Even other, like, people with racist ideas. When they see someone who's just a person who hates for hate's sake. It's like, alright, you're, you're on something else. But, um... Like, I, I don't think Ben is a racist person. I think he's just not as familiar with um you know the context of the situation with systemic racism that made sense right yeah um we'll get into that but also slightly contradictory but i do believe there's a difference between assessing you know a group of people and a person individually um there's no such thing as a bad culture that's like a weird weird idea a weird sentiment to say um there's practices within cultures that can be either problematic or self-destructive to the culture and no one's gonna deny that like no one's gonna say like you know just you know bad things are good no one's here to say that but like a culture in itself can't really be bad because that's just that would be saying like the entire culture is just horrible practices which no culture can exist that way like it would it would you know kill itself out rather quickly if the entire culture is just counterproductive to existence like that's just not possible um especially in today's society um in america especially um and then the bigger problem is in the context he's essentially one saying there is black culture which i agree to an extent there is there is like you know what you can i what you can say is like a black culture um i don't know that's a weird way of saying it though that i'm uncomfortable with like there's cultures that stem from what i guess would be traditionally black cultures and like oh my god like there's so many problems with that statement too the fact that there still is black culture in america is weird when we've we've been it's supposed to be unsegregated and is supposed to be that way for almost a hundred years now 
probably like 70, 80 years. Um, and there's still, it's still like not uncommon to say that there is black and white culture. You know what I mean? And that's kind of part of the issue that we're pointing to is that like there's still separate cultures in a country where there's that's not supposed to be the case. It's supposed to be one American culture. You know what I mean? With like subcultures in it. Like I understand like battle rap culture is its own kind of culture, but that's because it's like it's a subculture of and I guess like now nowadays it's more across the world too. So I guess it wouldn't be fair to say uh, a subculture of American culture. Um, it's a subculture of the world at this point. And, uh, like, that's a, that's a slightly different thing. That's a culture that people go into, you know, based on personality and enjoyment. The fact that there is cultures based on race is one kind of fucked up. Like, that's the point. And two not supposed to be a thing in you know the great melting pot of america and then two he's saying not only is there black culture uh yeah um he's saying that black culture is bad which he didn't outright say that but he did kind of in the context to sneak that in um i'm sure what he's about to do <clears throat> well what i remember him doing I watched this video once through. Um, he's about to prop up that white culture is good. And that's... Again, like, it's hard when people say stuff like this not to be like, bro, you're a fucking racist. Like, it's just a very racist idea that is probably due to not enough contact with people of different races to be honest like it's just a very 2d simplistic outlook on on races you know like i personally subscribe to the scient scientific definition of races which is just more of a complexion due to ancestral heritage in relation to where on the planet you were and how much sun it got. Like, I'm pale because my ancestors were pale. And that was due to over time. We just needed less melanin due, due to the fact that we originated from northern parts of the world. That's it to me. Like, it's not really anything more than just, alright, you have ancestors that, you know, adapted to their place on the world as humans do like then like i don't think that's like a real substantive difference though i think it's just a, a, the color of the skin which arguably all of skin is just a shade of orange you know like a dark orange to light orange really light orange whatever like it's just skin i don't know it's not that big of a fucking deal but then like he i don't know just the whole fact that like skin color is now a culture in this conversation it's so hard to like buy into all these premises that are just not accurate or true or like realistic that he snuck in super super quickly or just like one fucking quick sentence of like bad cultures it's like oof the second you say that the second you say bad culture you're saying a lot of shit at once like you're saying black culture is bad you're saying that culture is still divided by race and all this shit that like we're supposed supposedly supposed to be getting over you know not getting over in that sense of like we're supposed to be intellectually beyond at this point of it being an issue you know what i mean you know what i mean if i say things wrong just correct me on how to say it but i i think that most people 
can understand that I'm trying to make uh, points for the right reasons here. Generally, the result of bad. I'm sorry if I ramble. I'm I like to smoke weed. Things that have happened in the past or bad modes of thought that have prevailed over time. So, for example, uh, there's a, a great book by Thomas Sowell uh, called uh, Black Rednecks and White Liberals. Uh, and that book essentially suggests that a lot of the, path uh, the pathologies that exist about single motherhood, for example, in the black community or high rates of violence are actually outgrowths of a slave and post-slave culture that was imposed by a white society that didn't bother with policing. That ooh, ooh. Okay. Like, he keeps starting off right, and then he his conclusions are fucked. Like, okay, I haven't read that book, so I can't say if he's representing any point uh, fairly from that book, but uh, the point being was... Uh, Okay, there's the historical context of slavery did happen in America. As, well, that's where the conversation is at the point. <coughs> and uh, the people who benefited from slavery were mostly, if not completely, white. The people who suffered from slavery were mostly, if not completely, black. And then even when slavery ended, all that money, resource, land, what white people still had. And black people did not. Even though they were technically not slaves anymore, you know, you can't just say you're equal and then not, not uh, acknowledge the fact that all the resources are still divided by race. So, already, from there, white people have, you know, the resources and all that shit. And then, once slavery ended, most white people weren't just like, oh yeah, black people are equal. Most people weren't, like, racial division was very normalized, especially right after slavery. Like, it's arguable that half the country was still for racist racism well slavery at that point there was literally you know they like to say there wasn't a war based on slavery but uh it kind of what the freedom to have slaves states rights to own slaves <laughs> so uh you know like half the country still really wanted slavery like animately wanted slavery and, you know, people who are for slavery probably don't think of the people who are slaves as human beings. So, one, all the resources go to these people who, um, you know, gain the resources off the work, the free labor of these other people. And even when they're technically supposed to be equal... The person with all the resources probably still holds a lot of fucked up biases that makes it so they don't want to share those resources with those people that they don't consider people. And, you know, racism's still a thing. So, <laughs> there's still people, plenty of people, who don't want to share their resources with other people based on the color of their skin. That is still a prevalent thing. And, uh... We can get into the stats about that in a minute, but I'll let you make a couple more points that are a little more uh, relevant to that. But, uh, so essentially, like, even after, like, Jim Crow and all that shit was abolished, you know, on paper, we were equal, but that doesn't account for how, uh you know, people act in terms of that, you know. Most people, even if they're legally told not to do something, they're going to try to find a loophole or whatever the fuck to still do whatever they want. Um, and when it comes to deep-rooted hatred or bias towards other people, you know, it's 
yeah, going to have damaging effects on those people, especially when certain people have all the resources. I feel like I made that point already, though. That didn't, in, that didn't care about inculcating morals or virtues in, in slaves. Obviously, they actually actively oh, yeah. fought against it because they didn't... In this point, he's basically saying it's white people's problem that they... Or white people's fault that they, <laughs> that they didn't teach black people how to be white. Like, oh my god. Like, just saying that sentence made me feel really bad. Not even bad, just, ugh, I didn't want to say that today. But, uh, essentially his point is that white culture is good. Okay, the base, the base, again, bringing you back, the base idea of all of this is that there is white and black culture. And then on top of that, he's saying that black culture is bad, and white culture is good. And then the historical context is that white people did a bad job of teaching black people how to be white and adapting to white culture, which he's already said is good. Like, it's... There's so many just levels of, like, fucked up premises that I nor most people should or should be able to agree to. Oh, so yeah, that's didn't want that to happen, yeah. um, and so there was an active fight from assimil uh, against assimilation by white people, and that created a an un kind of making a bit of the point, but also I'll underground that. culture that's really bad, and that exists in parts of white America too. It exists in Appalachia. So yes, I, I think bad cultures have nothing to do with race. Uh, I don't think that just because the, this is why I'm saying I don't know why it borders on. race. They have nothing to do with race, but then you're summing up an, an entire race as a bad culture or good culture. Like, you're contradicting yourself there, buddy. Racism to say the cultures are bad. Like, some cultures are bad, some cultures are good, and that has nothing to do with race. No, Char no, 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 no. Cultures cannot be good or bad. Cultures just are, and then the practices within them can be good or bad, but if any culture has too many bad practices they're just not going to like it's it, it can't be a culture at that point it's not really you know uh, there's just so many like things about this argument that put like a really bad taste in uh my mind Charles Murray wrote an entire book called Coming Apart about pathologies in white communities uh, that, that are really destructive. So bad cultures do arise very often from historical circumstances, including historical discrimination. What I say is that today there's nothing preventing an individual from superseding the culture in which you grew up and making good decisions. There it is. That's the part that I mostly wish to address because he kind of addressed historical context through a problematic lens but at least you know he had some amount of, some amount of uh realistic i mean half his his beginning parts were accurate and then he got to weird conclusions but how um uh, how he's assessing the modern context is the problematic part that most uh, people who have racist ideas, you know, regurgitate, is that there's nothing in America holding people down today. And then I'm sure if you've had this conversation, it detracts into whether or not whether or not white oh my god john talk whether or not white privilege exists and i don't know a lot of a lot of people especially white people i'm not gonna lie all right this is racist on my part to say but whatever are good at twisting the victim role around to fit their narrative especially in shit like that to say white privilege like i've heard so many people say saying there is white privilege is racist and it's like no that's 
how 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 is it racist to say that because enough white people are racist and have all the resources to make that racism detrimental to other people's lives how, like and that doesn't affect other white people how is that racist to say that's just a an analysis of the observation of the situation these words are rhyming a little too well i've been practicing my my uh ribbity ribbity raps yo now i'm accidentally rhyming but uh yeah so essentially they'll say there's nothing holding down black people and that's just not not true of americans america's society and their stats um i wish i could find a way to show them on the computer but you can easily google it and i know you can find whatever you want on google but you're gonna find more of you know true shit from reputable places than not true shit from reputable places so you know learn to fucking research before you say stupid shit like that but uh essentially there's enough stats to show that one having a black sounding name makes it i believe like twice as difficult to uh get a job even with all the same credentials um cops are uh statistically twice as quick to violence against black males in particular the justice system in general just like um in court black males are given the harshest sentences for the same crimes as other people uh statistically they're just like for the same crimes that some people get off of uh, people with all the same priors for the same exact crime if they are black are statistically given worse uh, worse punishments for the same shit and that's usually due to the ability to afford a good lawyer and that you know comes from all the resources that one set of people have and refuse to share with the other um, and then again racism does still exist i'm sure even mr ben can acknowledge that and then he kind of acknowledged the historical context of resources being owned by one set of people and not the other and not sharing so i'm i'm sure like uh, th like that's an obvious reason why it's hard to obtain resources if you know the people who hoarded it all on your back is not willing to share it with you um I'm trying to think what i haven't said already um schooling systems in areas that are traditionally black which again there it's fucked up that we kind of as a country made black areas and uh just kind of you know we didn't shoo them into them but we made certain areas really cheap and then accessible to only the like that's a whole deeper thing too but the fact that there are black areas is kind of fucked up and then those areas are uh statistically underfunded both in like schooling systems uh there's like less um like just uh what's it called infrastructure or whatever um no, I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. Uh, you know, you have to drive further out to get better jobs and all these other shits that, you know, when added together, make it really hard to... Like, one, it's hard to get out of poverty, no matter what. Like, I don't want to say, um, like, if you're white and you got out of poverty, it was like, you know, a cakewalk. Getting out of poverty is a bitch and a half. Um, and that's just true everywhere in the world. Um, that's true no matter what color you are. But then when there are, like, literal, like, systemic practices, 
still happening that, you know, can be statistically pointed to that have an effect, um, like, you know, it makes it ten times harder to get out of poverty, um, and we kind of went over, like, why one demographic of people of, uh, skin color would fall into poverty in America here. Um, he kind of brought up, a uh, single motherhood as, like, a passive point, and again, he doesn't point out the context of it, um, because black males are really, really, like, targeted by the justice system, both police and, uh, judges and shit. Sure. Um... You know, they kind of take... Oh, yeah, and uh, black males are statistically more likely to go to prison for crimes they didn't even do. Uh, again, because not being able to afford a lawyer, cops, biases to, you know, pull over or stop black people and blah, blah, blah. Um. So, like, why? Why do black males... Aren't black males not as able to be there it's not just a random arbitrary choice it's because like they're literally being taken away by the justice system sometimes just by prison imprisoning them and then at worst killing them um and yeah again none of this is comfortable to talk about especially you know as a white person uh But yeah, so you can't just passively say like, oh, single motherhood, bad, you know, that's a bad culture you got, you got, because, you know, single motherhood, and then like not go over why single motherhood's occurring, um, like when the justice system you live under practically targets you, well, doesn't practice, like does target you. And, like, there's a lot of cops and lawyers and shit that have came out and said, like, yeah, they basically have to meet a certain amount of, like, a quota of a kind, and they would just pick on black males. And, like, there's confessions of this shit all over. But I won't get into anecdotal stories and shit. Um, there's stats and shit showing that, um... <laughs> And, like, yeah, dude, it's just, like, he's broadly saying all this shit with no context behind it or why things are that way. And then he's just trying to sum it up by, yeah, bad culture. It's a bad culture, which is a obscene statement to begin with. Oh, my God, just the amount of uncomfortable I am. John, why are you doing videos that make you uncomfortable? I don't know, dude. Like, why Why do I do anything? Why Why do I exist? All right, In a free country, somebody's going to have to break this chain. Somebody's going to have to break this cycle. All right, and so, it, this am too. I... Oh, my God, that's fucking upsetting. Um, it's not up to the oppressed to stop being oppressed. Don't fucking gaslight an entire fucking demographic of people who have been fucked over by their own country. By saying, oh, someone has to break the cycle, and then, like, just looking at them as if it's, like, it's up to you. No, dude, like, it's up to the oppressors to stop oppressing. Like, why is that not the obvious answer? <laughs> like, what the fuck, bro? Like, do you know how... F and, like, dude, he's, like, in confidence saying someone has to break the cycle. Without even realizing, like, how absurd, how abs, <laughs> it's like, oh my god, and I'm trying not to, like, go to, like, violent metaphors, but, like, if someone is just punching someone in the face, I can't just, and that person punching the other person is like, well, someone has to break the cycle, you know, it's up to you to move your face, no, dude, stop punching, stop punching, <laughs> like, Dude, like, it's not up to the oppressed to stop being oppressed. That is an absurd sentiment that I, I will never entertain. 
nor should it be. Like, if anyone ever says that to you, like, you should... Like, it's hard not to laugh in people's faces. I understand when they say just absurd shit like this and don't really understand the implications of what they just said. Um, you can't... Like, it's a really hard thing to maneuver around. And I understand that. And at that point, I wouldn't blame people for uh, walking away from that conversation. Come here, buddy. Why are you whining? Huh? Something in the yard? Anyway, um... I gonna. Bl I don't care if you wanna. If you wanna say that that the pathology that exists in the black community, uh, black inner city community of high rates of single motherhood and violence, for example, um, or lack of institutional wealth, uh, that that is a result of, of historic racism. I'm fine with you saying that. I don't have any problem with that. I'm not talking about historical racism when I talk about white privilege. I'm talking about right now the idea that there's a superstructure of rules and laws that are preventing you from. He's not talking about half of the conversation of it. Like, bro, you can't do that. You can't just say, like, yeah, I know that's, like, half of the conversation, but I'm not talking about that. It's like, well, we all are. We all have to. We all have to acknowledge historical context. I don't know how many times I have to explain to people in life that, you know, the present stems from the past as well as the future with the present. Like, it's it's not that fucking hard. Chill out, buddy. Chill out. Yeah, I know. I know. Succeeding or a culture that is trying to keep you down. I don't think that's the case. So the question becomes, if you are here, let's say, let's say that on average, the culture in white America, uh, or with regard to single motherhood, to take an example, uh, is, is here, right? Because there's less single motherhood in the white community than the black community. And in the black community, it's, it's here because it's 70% single motherhood rate. Again, he's not going to explain why. He's going to say it's just an arbitrary choice or make it... He's going to imply that it's just an arbitrary part of black culture that, like, fatherlessness is just a thing with them. Like, one, which is just a fucked up thing to Im imply, and two, like, is completely ignorant to the reasons of why that occurs in the first place. And this is why, like... Conversations like this are really, really, like, uncomfortable to engage in. Um, and I imagine that if, if you are, you know, someone who is black, dude, I get fucking, like, annoyed and kind of, like, offended just listening to shit like this if i if i was black and like i was personally made to feel like i'm not i'm subhuman or like you know the shitty things that he's ascribing to the culture or whatever is like just inherently part of who i am i would be fucking really upset and like i understand that and then like a lot of people who you know the not racists who have a lot of racist ideas they like to point to that anger as if, like, that that makes them right. Like, oh, you're angry that I think you're, like, subhuman? That just proves that you're subhuman. Like, what? what the fuck? I don't know. It's such a gaslighting, stupid topic that, like, we really should not have to deal with. And, like, I wouldn't... I don't know. I've seen a lot of, like, weirdly racist shit on the internet lately, so... And, like, I don't go out of my way to see racist shit. Like, I promise. I'm not on KKKNazi.com. I promise, you guys. But, like, just in casual debate and conversations, like, weird racist shit comes up. And it's really... I don't know. It's something that really, I guess, needs to be addressed again. Um, which is unfortunate. In the white community, it's 40%. Okay, so the question is, before, thanks to racism and thanks to discrimination, there was a cap on the black community that was here, and they couldn't get past it. Okay, now the, the ceiling's been removed. So what do you, as an individual black person, do to change your life? And I don't think it's helpful. And in fact, I think it's actually quite hurtful to spend an enormous... 
he hasn't explained how that ceiling has been removed. So that point's kind of pointless. And then it, like, it just, it hasn't been. Like, that's just not true. Like, it's just not true that that ceiling's been removed. So, sorry uh, to tell you, buddy, but pretty wrong amount of time talking about the legacy of discrimination and racism instead of talking about what can you do right now to fix your problem you know this is a general issue that i have in all of my relationships my, when my wife <laughs> all right um now he's trying to talk about his personal relationships uh rule of thumb with me if if you're talking to me don't bring up your personal relationships because I'm just going to roast all of it then. <laughs> like, not on, not intentionally. It's just I'm going to... Now my point is, like... So, literally everyone in your daily life is telling you this? Are you the omnipotent Mr. Know-it-all? Or does, like, the idea that literally everyone in your life system disagrees with you about this thing is might be a sign that maybe you're the one who's wrong you know and i'm trying not to just roast his life like that i'm trying to have a good faith conversation this isn't a battle it's a debate which i guess you know you can debate in a battle whatever wife comes to me and she says there's a problem in my life before we even have the conversation i say to her is this a listening conversation or is this a you want me to fix it conversation <laughs> All right, well, you know, casual misogyny. Funny in the 80s and 90s, but... Because bitches be tripping, right? You know, like, half the time, they just want us men to solve it. It's like, fuck out of here, bro. Like, the way he views the rest... Like, this is how he thinks about his wife, dude. Like, he thinks, like... Dude, I'm not gonna lie... Maybe this is just me, you know, not having as many problems with women as I probably should. But if if half the time your wife talks to you about something serious, you think it's frivolous and like something you can easily dismiss by, why, why are you with her, dude? Like, why are you with someone who just you know brings up problems that she wants you to this is why i fucking hate when people bring up like personal shit to try to bring up like to uh support a point it's like i mean if you want to talk about that i can i can get into why you... <laughs> why this is just embarrassing for you to fucking bring up but i'm i'm gonna try to hold my uh my battle rap instincts back in this moment. And I think that when it comes to politics, there should be far fewer listening conversations. Like, I want you to tell me about all the crap that's happened to you, because I don't care. I mean, I care, but it doesn't, but now the question is, what are you gonna do? Right, that's a much more important conversation. Well, that, oh my God, because I don't care. I don't care that cops are quicker to violence. I don't care that, you know, a specific demographic is statistically being accused of crimes they don't do, imp imprisoned, <laughs> more like i don't care that like all these biases are still having like a very active effect on people's lives today and that's his point like he doesn't care it's not that it's not that he believes systemic racism doesn't exist it's that he doesn't care and this is what like i get really fucking annoyed with is like these people will animately, animately fucking argue the point of its existence and then in the same breath just be like, I don't care. Like, so even if I fucking prove to you something that you, your whole fucking point depends on is like not accurate of 
anything going on in real life. Even if I prove to you all that, you're just going to be I don't care. And that's the whole point, dude, is like, <laughs> your whole point is you don't care. And you don't want to hear about it anymore. That's it. They don't want to hear about other people's problems. Um, Most of them... Most people who argue against shit like this just have stupid anecdotes like, oh, my my parents came from, you know, an island in the middle of the ocean where we were all, like, somehow really white and came here. And now, you know, look at me, I'm a rich guy. Uh, it's like, uh, no, that's not, like, one, you're ignoring the whole, you're begging the question of, like, if white privilege does it actually affect the outcome of people coming here and succeeding and ignoring that and then two like if you've immigrated to america within i'd say like the last 50 years you've probably not been that poor to begin with like it's not that it's not eco economically available to everyone to just uproot your life and go to another country and the idea that you know people do that is i don't know annoying like they came to america with nothing but a dime in their shoe it's like no the fuck they didn't how the fuck they get here like unless you're from mexico or canada where you can walk there is no possible way you came from europe broke and lived you're gonna starve to death really fucking quickly if you come here with no fucking money like there has to be some kind of something well i came here with no money but a job yeah i came here and got a job pretty quickly and you know that i had money so you know my my money was not you know really an issue for long how did i get the job oh because i'm white and the further back in time you go the more relevant that is and sadly, the point is it's still relevant today. I don't know. I'm trying not to get... I'm avoiding just roasting his stupid life. And conversation Because we only have five minutes together. Is that five minutes going to be spent on all the terrible things that happened, which I fully agree with, that I, I would have fought if I were there, but I wasn't, right? Are we going to spend five minutes talking about all the terrible things that happened to blacks and Jews and gays and women and... Um, I don't know. Like, the, the argument that... Well, I'm personally against racism and slavery, so, you know, don't talk about it. It's like, even if you're personally against it, other people aren't. Like, that. Like, oh my god, such a sidestep of the issue. And, like, it's just the more I watch this, the more dishonest it is, too. Um, so yeah, this is how my life is going. I'm purposely making myself watch videos that aggravate the shit out of me to put on the internet. And Hispanics in, in the United States, are we going to talk about right now what you can do to succeed? Because I don't think that the rules are holding you back. So I've never, ever. All right, like now we're just talking in circles um we've kind of already addressed all this and everything he's saying is built off bullshit premises so his conclusions are not really landing either and um to explain the, why the conclusions are dumb i would have to regurgitate everything i just said on why the premises are dumb and uh i don't know this is I want to watch some some battles. I don't want to argue with this fucking. Yeah. Um. There is. You know, two, three more minutes to this video. I don't see it being. All right. Suck it up, John. Let's get there. At this. any point, suggested that there's not been historic discrimination against black people, or even that current day poverty is at least in part an outgrowth of that historic discrimination. What I have suggested is that if you are using that historic discrimination as a reason why you are not, as an individual human being, becoming more income mobile, 
and not making good decisions, no one is making the call for you right now as an individual to get that girl pregnant. And that's that's the argument that I'm making. What the fuck are you? Oh my god, dude. Just a weird left turn. Dude, he keeps, like, throwing in, like, such weird fucking nonsensical, non-equivalent things to say in the middle of whatever he's saying. And it's like, bro, what are you talking about? Where did pregnancy come up? Where did... I guess kind of with single motherhood, but then, like, he's ignoring a bunch of other shit. And then that's not really the point of that conversation either. Like, uh, like this is, again, this is just why it's so exhausting. It's just the conclusions are built off so many ridiculous premises that, like, one, talk about black people as if they're a monolith, as if they all just you know, get home from the black people meeting every Friday with the weekly agenda as if like, hey, this is what we as black people are going to do this week. Um, this is how we all feel about things. This is all of our thoughts and opinions. This is what we all love to do. And it's like, what do you know, dude? Like, that's not, that's not how people are of any race, of any lifestyle. Like, no culture of any form. Like, there's organizing events and, like, get-togethers or whatever, but that's not, like, a like a, a monolithic thing of every part of their life. I don't know. Uh, this is really exhausting. Oh. Sure, yeah. Um, so, I guess, like, would you... Like so, don't well, you? You have to admit though that between different races and different cultures, there are there are different levels of success, and there's definitely you would expect that somebody who grows up with with uh, with a less with being able less to succeed, you you would you would expect that that would happen in certain in certain communities and certain right. That's why they're called pathologies of culture. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if if you grew up in a worse situation than somebody else who grew up in a better situation, of course you're going to grow up having obstacles that that other person has to overcome. But that doesn't mean that that other person number one victimized you. All right, now it's getting into. Uh... The whole, well, I'm not racist, so that doesn't, like, again. And then he's going to try to make it sound like this is a crusade on white people. White people. Sorry. Um, which, it just really isn't, that's not the point. Like, when people bring up systemic racism or how racism affects today's society no one's trying to hold down all of white people and make them apologize that's not the point no one's trying to be like you know say sorry mr white man and you know like i don't know and what what are we what are we talking about what are we talking about <laughs> cuz no one's doing that but like the point is like all the resources are still owned and well not entirely this is when they like to be like oh what about michael jordan and oprah and it's like okay there's a couple rich examples but um you know that doesn't take away from statistics that show or right, i'm just getting annoyed with this whole conversation. Right. There's no one in America today, for example, who's enslaved a black person that I know of, or if they have, they'd be in jail. It's not the point, dude. It's like, again, uh, I don't know how to disprove this stuff without going over the exact same stuff that led to these conclusions, but like, I already proved why they're ridiculous to, to say.